Hello, my name is Oak with Oak Astrology School and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about the astrology of Karen, the Karen archetype. And this is a really fascinating uh, thing that I've realized and have come to. And I, I'm, I'm really excited to share that with you. But in order to get the best out of this video, you're going to need to go back to my previous video that I did on the Pluto return of the United States. And the Pluto return of the United States and Karen are very much interrelated. And I'm, I'm super excited to show you why. And in this video, you're really going to get an understanding of how I see astrology because yes, we learn about our personality. We learn about world events and that's the good stuff that astrology can bring us. But the astrology as a tool for the personal, social and political are definitely ways to understand it. And you're not able to really integrate all of that unless you bring in the spiritual aspect, right? Like the overarching universal aspect. And so within that comes our ancestry. Within that comes our spiritual inheritances. And so this is my perspective. This is very much my way of seeing astrological thinking and astrological thought and ast astrological analysis. But I really just wanted to kind of bring in a foundation of like, this is really something that I'm seeing on a spiritual level. And so, yeah, I'm going to just say right away that the Karen archetype, this irate white woman that is ready to call the police on an unsuspecting and, you know, black or brown person that's just minding their business, you know, the, the, the lack of empathy, the narcissistic tendencies of these, these people that are perpetuating so much violence, it is a spiritual issue. And so bringing it back to this idea of the Pluto return of the United States, right? Pluto is having its Pluto return. It's a 248 year cycle, which actually this is the first one because the United States was formed about 248, 250 years ago. And so this Pluto return has been happening for the past few years and it will be continuing to happen for the next several years. In 2022, it is exact and the effects of it we're really going to see over a longer period of time. But there's definitely a lot of stuff happening culturally for all of us, culturally and politically. Pluto is the planet that represents the shadow material. Oftentimes our shadow is stuff that we kind of like sweep under the rug. We, we save that for later. We put it in the closet, right? And so when we have our Pluto return, there are things that we cannot avoid. And Pluto, where it is moving in the sky, shows us where we have collective shadow that is coming to the surface, right? So as Pluto is moving through Capricorn, since 2008, we've been seeing the corruption of the corporate structure. We've been seeing the, uh, the, the mass corruption of all patriarchal governments, all governments essentially. And so we're really seeing that, right? Like, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> there is a lot of this dynamic between the 1% and, and everyone else. And we're all seeing that. And that's why just on a collective level, there's so many of us that are really looking at capitalism. We're looking at the effects of colonialism. It's because Pluto is that, that underbelly. It's, it's, a, it's a consciousness where we're recognizing the thing that needs to change. Right? And so when we're doing anything like shadow work or our own healing, we have to completely name and recognize the thing in order to change it. And so, you know, because the Pluto return of the United States is happening in the sign of Capricorn, that means that it has a really, really strong impact on us as a country. The Pluto in the United States chart is situated in the area of income and the economy, the second house. And so when we think about the shadow material of the United States economic wealth, it is built upon slave labor. It's built upon slavery. So we have to understand that that is a core piece of our collective shadow that is coming to the surface. So you see where I'm going with this, right? So Karen, as the archetype of this irate white woman who is uh, seemingly mentally unwell, 
right? Like these extreme outbursts of tantrum and rage and hatred, um, they're, and it's, it's, it's so highly visible, right? Like the, all of the viral videos that we've seen, it is very disturbing. And it's also been uh, portrayed in a way that is almost comical because it's like, where is this, where is this coming from? And this speaks directly to the nature of Pluto because Pluto is where we are in a space of naming the monster, right? Our shadow, we oftentimes demonize our shadow. And when we're not able to find, uh, when we're not able to come to terms with our own shadow material, we will project it out into the world, we'll project it out onto others. And it's our deepest, darkest shit. It's our deepest, darkest garbage, essentially. We may think of slavery as something of the past. I don't, but we may think of slavery as something of the past. Like, oh, why can't we just get over it? Well, when we think about karma from this perspective of all previous actions that have contributed to make the moment that you're in, the, the moment of your life that you're in, all of the decisions, histories upon histories of decisions, they have created this very moment. It's a very logical thing. There's also this idea of karma from the Buddhist philosophical perspective where karma is ignorant. Karma is the repetitive actions that we perpetuate over and over and over cycles in our lives or maybe even cycles in previous lives. So whether or not you ascribe to that, it does make sense, right? There's these ideas of at least in your own, at least in this lifetime there are certain repetitive patterns that you create and that's really how I see the birth chart it's repetitive energetics repetitive dynamics that occur over and over in cyclical nature and so someone that is repeating the same action over and over and causing harm to themselves, they're like, oh my God, I just keep going back to this relationship. I just keep meeting the same kinds of people that are, are constantly telling me that I'm a horrible person. We have to pay attention to those cycles in our lives. But the thing about ignorance and the thing about karma as ignorance is that these are things that we cannot see. Of course, if we wanted to make our lives perfect, we would just do the thing to make our lives perfect, but we have these karmas that keep us in these repetitive cycles. And so this idea of Karen, who is not able to see the humanity in another person, not able to see anything other than someone that needs to go back to their own country or someone that is below them, the dehumanization that Karen actually perpetuates, that is a type of violence. That is a spiritual blockage that you are not able to see the humanity in another person. And that is based on all of the histories of slave labor, all of the histories of being a slaveholder. And that is an example of how ancestral narratives or these ideas of spiritual inheritances affect large groups of people. You know, so this idea of slavery as something that does not exist anymore no, the energetics of slavery are still there. And the way that the United States has created structures based upon slavery still persists. The prison, the prison industrial complex that is based within this idea of dehumanization. Um, and it's also on a mass level. Also, what's really interesting is how these Karen incidents that get shown on social media they oftentimes happen in the service industry. They happen with people working at Starbucks or McDonald's, or they happen with any you know, store clerk like this, let me speak to the manager. And then there's just this extreme frustration with not getting what Karen wants. And that is just such an example of how slavery is still something that is continually perpetuated. It's not overtly slavery, but the energetics of treating people in that way are still very present. And to me, that is a spiritual inheritance. To not be able to see the humanity of others is something that is indicative of slavery. And so this is a collective consciousness that is coming to the surface. That's why it is so visible. 
And where we have Pluto, we have this capacity to heal, but we always have to really firmly look deep, 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 deep within. And also we have to accept the darkness of the reality. We have to accept the darkness of the situation. We have to accept that we are also perpetuating some of those narratives as well. Pluto is a very interesting quality because where we have our shadow, we oftentimes have this lack of desire or this resistance to actually accept, you know, accept that we are deeply hurt or that we have caused harm in some way. But when we cause harm, it, it comes from something deeper within. Addressing the Karen archetype is really just a tiny fractal. The overarching umbrella of this dynamic is colonialism. And Colonialism is completely the same thing as Pluto in Capricorn, at least in this paradigm. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn, the British Empire really had like kind of world domination, right? It had colonized most countries in the world or had had major, major impact on all the countries in the world through colonization. And the United States being, you know, from the British colonies, still carrying that colonial attitude it, and it still shows in our political structure and in order to colonize you have to believe fully that your way is better than the uh, uncivilized barbarians of other countries we are continually indoctrinated with this attitude but the nature of how the united states portrays itself or any colonial mindset portrays itself as i'm helping i'm making this better that really shows in United States history, right? The eradication of indigenous peoples, um, the war on drugs, right? Which fed into the prison industrial complex, which is like the shining achievement of the United States, as well as the Patriot Act. Like these are all ways of establishing the enemy. And enemy and Pluto are synonymous terms. They are synonymous terms because what happens is that when we see the bad guy, when we see the enemy, we are able to justify the reasons why we are better than them, right? It's a good, bad narrative. And so when we bring this back to Karen, who is like this person who is in such deep violation and so ready to call the cops, it's because she sees an enemy. Right? She sees someone who is inherently wrong. There's the justified sense of self and then the dehumanized version of the other. And the interesting thing with Pluto is that this speaks to the compartmentalization of our own psyche. We're not able to integrate the whole. We're only seeing things as good and bad. And this is an example of that really, really pained psyche. And over time, when we are just so focused on right and wrong, this is a wrong person and I'm a right person, it creates extreme distortion. And that is definitely, you know, that, that is narcissistic when we think about it from like a psychological term, like that is essentially narcissism. But this is on a collective scale. This is on a collective scale. And so why am I interested in Karen? We understand this idea of male domination. I think that that's very obvious because we live in a patriarchal society. But Karen is an archetype that is both woman and white. She is both oppressed and oppressor. So within the, the entire identity of Karen, there is an initially a split because women in a patriarchal society have less privilege. They are, um, you know, there are histories of violation, of not having personal empowerment, and then to also simultaneously be the oppressor. And I think that that creates kind of like a manic quality. It creates a manic quality within. And so, you know, I'm speaking about this from like a plutonic astrological sense. So, you know, this is a sensitive topic, take it as you will, but I'm really just bringing in correlations to how I see this. So with the extreme tantruming of Karen, right, the, those outbursts of rage, right? Like it's, it's a deep seated pain. Like let's really get it straight. It's a deep seated pain that is showing up as mental illness. And 
it's coming from this like reaching for this desire to have a sense of authority, but also having histories of violation as well. Histories of violation, histories of dehumanization, histories of domination. I cannot see astrological analysis without looking at ancestry, without looking at history. This is how I see things spiritually because you can see how over time, over generations, these same themes circulate. It is all karmic inheritance. So when we think about the reason why some white folks have a hard time seeing the issues with racism is because if they were to come to terms with the levels of pain that exist within their own ancestry, the levels of shame and hurt, it would almost be too much. And if you were to recognize that, it would shift your whole way of relating to this idea of privilege. Who would want to give up their comfort? It's, it's, it's easier to maintain your comfort. It might be easier to turn the other way because it allows you to, you know, keep your seat. And so, you know, these are all things, you know, when it comes to privilege, when it comes to all the dynamics that have come up since 2020, these are things that might be quite obvious, but really thinking about Karen as a manifestation of this deep, deep soul healing that is happening on a collective level. It really speaks to the need of having to address how racism is something that is embedded in our politics, in our political structures. It's embedded in mass historic frameworks that we are all having to sort and sift through. And to be the descendant of that, it's a very complex thing because you are having to address this idea of where you come from, this, your seat at the table currently, and the impact that it has on other people, the impact it has on yourself. And then the physical and the emotional manifestation of how that shows up as an identity. So, you know, these are my thoughts on astrology and Karen. <laughs> Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. It's a really powerful thing to think about because you really, really understand the nature of Pluto, you know. Just because I'm talking about Karen, you know, we can think about the ways that we are not able to come to terms with our own shadow material and how that shows up as pain, how that shows up as illness, how that shows up as projection of trying to define our worth outside of ourselves. But it really comes from something really hurt inside. And so, my name is Oak with Oak Astrology School. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and share. If you were interested in learning astrology with me, I teach astrology from the lens of healing, counseling, and using astrology as a tool for liberation. I have some really fantastic mentorship programs. I have a 12-month natal astrology mentorship, which is super deep dive. You're really gonna learn how to read a chart like a professional. You're gonna have all the tools to really learn how to read a birth chart. Do not apply to this if you're not serious. <laughs> it's just, it's a serious program. So do not apply to this unless you're really ready to take that step. And then once you know how to read a birth chart fully, or if you know how to read a birth chart fully, uh, I have a five month transits and predictive astrology mentorship. And that one is so great. You get to learn how to forecast your, your week, your month, your year. You learn how to do it for other people. You learn how to really do it from a really effective counseling perspective and you get a lot of the tools that I use in my consults. I also have um, single classes, um, the Saturn return class. I also have classes on Teachable. If you're interested in booking a reading with me, my consulting page is oakastrology.com and my school website is oakastrologyschool.com. Thank you so much and bless.